In contact, we can define eight different loops per waveform, and we can determine what happens when we release a key. Do the loops keep playing or do they stop? Let me show you a little bit about that in this tutorial. We're again working with a random loop here. You can grab any one you want. I'm going to pop out my wave editor, and I'll go to my sync slice tab, turn on the grid. We've got a fixed 16th note grid. I can, of course, use my transients, make it a little more precise. And let's listen to what this sounds like. So let me go to the sample loop tab, and you can see here the eight different loops. I'll turn on the first one. And because I have grid on, when I slide my endpoints of the loop, I'll snap to the grid. And we just want to loop this first section here. Let's play now. I'll turn on the loop button here, and we'll play. Now I have a couple different controls down here. I can set the loop start and end manually just by dragging. Notice even when I do it this way, it's still snapping to the grid. If I turn off grid, then it will go however I want without snapping to the grid. And I can drag that back. I can also define a little bit of a crossfade. If you hear clicks when you circle around your loop, you might want to turn up your crossfade. I can also tell Contact to change the tuning of the loop after the first pass through. Let me show you what I mean. If I raise this up here and I loop, you'll notice that after the first time through, all the subsequent repeats are raised in pitch. They're also raised in speed. Let's bring that back to zero. And then finally, there is a count. Count allows me to define a precise number of times I will loop before I continue forward. If it's zero, it will continue repeating until the end of time. If I raise it up, let's say to two, it will repeat twice and then move on. It stops after two times through. If I play it from my keyboard instead of from this play button here, see it repeated this twice and then kept playing until the very end, as long as I held down a key. I also have a loop edit button, which lets me precisely see the difference between the end of the loop and the beginning of the loop. And I can drag this to precisely align where I want the loop to connect the end to the beginning. And that's helpful, again, if I'm getting some pops and clicks, you may want to use this to smooth out the loop. Now, that's one loop. Let's define a second loop. And here it is. I'm just going to drag it around. Notice how I can drag not only the endpoints, but I can drag the entire loop if I hover over in the middle here. And we'll put this right at the third beat of the second bar. Now, what's going to happen here? Well, let's just listen to this one loop. All right, that's not too exciting. But now watch what happens when I play a key. It's going to repeat this first loop twice because I told it to. It's going to keep playing forward. And then when it hits the second loop, it's going to repeat this forever because I have count set to zero. Here we go. Now I, of course, can set a count for that second loop. I'll set the count to five. I'll set the tuning to 10, and now we'll hear this first loop repeat twice. It will continue to play, and then it will repeat this one five times, and the second through fifth time will be raised in pitch by 10 semitones. And so forth. Now I can define another six loops if I want to, and depending on where I place them and how I define them, when I hold down a key, it will loop multiple sections of this waveform. Now I'm going to turn this off for a moment, and I can do that by clicking this button. 
Each loop has its own on-off switch. We're just going to focus on this first loop for a moment. And I'm going to try out some of these different options here for how we handle the release cycle of the loop. Before I do that, I want to go back to my main envelope for this instrument, which I can find down here in the amplifier. Here is my envelope. Let's take a look at it. You can see that it releases in about 300 milliseconds. I'm going to raise up the release so it's longer, and so we can hear what happens when we let go of a key. So let's go back to the wave editor, and now let's see what happens when we have this set to until end. If I have the set to zero, when I play this loop, it would normally repeat until I let go of the key. Let's see what happens. I'm letting go. So even though I let go of the key, it keeps playing and playing until the release cycle ends. I can also set it to cycle backwards and forwards. I'm going to hold down the key. Let go. So that cycles back and forwards until the release cycle ends. If I change this to until release or cycle until release, then the loop will play as long as I'm holding down the key. But as soon as I let the key go, the loop ends and it continues normal playback of this waveform, which means it will go straight through to the rest of the waveform. Let me hold down the key. Just going to keep on looping. Now watch what happens when I let go now. All right, let's try that one more time. Let go. And then finally, there's one shot. Now one shot is great for drum samples where you want the entire loop to finish even when you let go of the key. Notice that the loop marker is turned off and we're back to the entire waveform with a start and end marker. If I go back to release, You'll see the loop markers here from one to two, highlighted in yellow. Turn on one shot, it's gone. So I have to use my start and end markers to set the loop. And then what will happen is no matter when I let go of the key, the entire loop, in this case the first bar, will finish. So let me play a note. And now let me let go in the middle. Let go. Let go. So it continues to play the entire loop. So just to review, if you want the loop to continue to play either forwards or forwards and backwards, as long as the release cycle is still active, then what you want is until end. If you want the loop to stop playing, but you want to continue on with the rest of the waveform, then you want either until release or cycle until release. And if you just want the loop to finish playing no matter when you let go of the key, then you want to go to one-shot mode. So that's a little bit about the various options for looping in the Contact Wave Editor.